Hello YouTube, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. In this tutorial, is not like my regular tutorials, so either with refinishing furniture, I'm showing you something that I've come close to mastering. So I'm sharing my tips and tricks on how to do a specific method. Um, this time, I'm over here y'all, I'm over, wait, I'm over here. Um, I'm doing something that I've never done before, but I thought, hey, you know what? Let's learn together, right? This is how I've learned. I'm completely self-taught. I've learned by doing, and by doing, I've made mistakes, and by mistakes, I've learned. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to do a tutorial on how to prep a live edge piece of wood. Never done it before. So the other day, I went to my first sawmill, and I know to some people, they're like, yeah, so what? That's like taking out the garbage. Yay. No, 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 no. This was a big deal for me. For this girl, this was a big deal. I drool over live edge uh, pieces of furniture that I see artisans, you know, do, they, they pour the resin in the middle of the live edge, or they just make beautiful, beautiful pieces of furniture out of live edge wood. So. I am going out of my areas of expertise. So I'm saying that from the get-go here, we're gonna to learn together. I've watched a couple other YouTubers, some woodworkers, and I think I know kind of what I need to do. So the other day I went to a sawmill. It was very exciting for me. It, it got my dopamine going, my little creative dopamine, and I chased that. So whenever that starts kicking in, I'm like, okay, we're going here, we're going here. So I'm doing a piece for a nonprofit organization. This is all, a do-gooder type of piece. I am transforming the base of a sewing machine, you know, like the metal old sewing machines, the part where the pedal, you pump it and it turns. I'm taking that base and I'm gonna turn it into like kind of like a, a wine station. We're gonna take that live edge piece of wood, we're gonna attach it to the top, we're gonna make sure that's all clean, nice and sanded and looking gorgeous. And then I'm gonna take some wine glass holders I'll fix those to the underside of the live edge wood and we're going to create a cool funky wine station and it's going to be raffled off at an event and it's going to benefit a nonprofit organization here that rescues dogs um, in New Hampshire. Now they rescue the dogs from all over the place but they bring them back here to New England and they find them forever homes and the organization is called Live, Live Free Dog Rescue or Animal Rescue. Gosh, you, I should have looked that up before I started this video, but I believe it's Live Free Animal Rescue. I'll make sure that that's their name before I start the next segment, but it's all going for a good cause. I love dogs, you know, with my little biscuit, my little guy, my little chihuahua. He was a rescue out of Texas. So of course, when they asked me to donate a piece, I was ready to help. So let's get started. The live edge piece of wood is over here on the other side of my workshop. Let's start this, you guys. Okay guys, we are on the other side of my workshop. I'm gonna get you the slab of wood that I decided to get. I was initially gonna go with pine, but I ended up finding this piece. I kind of gravitated towards this one. Isn't this one pretty? This is maple wood. And I was just drawn to all the beautiful wood grain in this slab and it's very heavy. Isn't it pretty? Woohoo! And it's heavy. It is so heavy. So my initial thoughts were when I've done these, I've done a couple of these sewing machine bases where I put wood on top. I've just done the lows in the past and I've always envisioned putting a live edge piece of wood but I just didn't have any connections and I just didn't know where to look. And so when I looked online, I found this awesome sawmill up in Maine and they are called Against the Grain. Awesome, the guy was so helpful. This was actually a taller piece of slab and I measured it out what I needed um, lengthwise. I needed 36 inches and he cut it right there on site. And that was that. And what I first was gravitating towards, now even though I'm pretty thrifty and I'm pretty cheap with everything else in my life, of course, I was gravitating towards the black walnut, which is like the bougie of woods, you know, I mean, just high end and very expensive. 
So then this caught my eye and I'm like, okay, this is cheaper. I can afford this and I can do this. So, so when I was watching YouTube videos of a particular woodworker, I wish I could remember his name. He said, the first thing you need to do is debark. That's right, debark the sides. So um, some people keep bark on, some don't. Um, I'm opting to take it off because it's already crumbling off in places. So um, the first thing I did, I got this piece early yesterday. It has been extremely hot here in New Hampshire, like 90 degrees. But before that, we had a couple days where it was just downpouring. And of course, this sawmill, this sawmill outside. So all his slabs of wood were outside. So it was definitely damp. And I kept this piece of wood outside for the last day and a half and it's pretty dry. Before I could tell it was um, wet to the touch. Um, so I think it's dry enough for me to get started on it, at least to sand it and whatnot and to debark it. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. I'm going to put it up here on my um, workbench and we are gonna debark this thing. Okay, I hope this is a good angle. Um, so we're gonna get started with just debarking it and what I was told to do is take just like a chisel something and just kind of lightly tap it off and it should just kind of pop off in sections. Go slow. being a little stubborn. I'm gonna first try peeling some of it off first with my hand. I know it's gonna make a mess, but I guess that's what shop backs are for. I'll try not to suck up these larger pieces. Okay, most of this, oh, there's a little bit, yeah, that's coming off just fine. On the end here, it's much easier, this section here coming off. Okay, there's the rest of this. Ooh, there's a loose piece. So just do it by hand if you can. Some of it will just crumble off like I'm finding. And the other parts you just have to chisel off. So I'm gonna put it on a time-lapse video, not bore you. Oh, and I looked up, the nonprofit is Live Free Animal Rescue. So check them out, look them up. They've got so many cute dogs and puppies and senior dogs, dogs with disabilities all needing a forever home. So go check them out. And I'm gonna put this on a time-lapse video. debarked that whole side didn't take me that long at all and look at that gorgeous wood grain look at that isn't that pretty Woo! i can't wait to start sanding this baby okay time to debark the other side okay guys here is the other side i'm going to start debarking this isn't too hard to do It's actually kind of therapeutic. Kind of reminds me of like when you get a bad sunburn and you gotta peel the skin. I know I'm so weird. I have the weirdest things that I like, but I don't mind like peeling a bad sunburn. I don't know, there's something about it. Like something about totally hyper-focusing on something I really enjoy. So this doesn't bother me in the least. So I'm gonna continue to do this and then we'll go on to the next step. Gosh, I already feel almost like a pro. No, I'm kidding. I'm getting there, I'm feeling confident. This is going well. 
Let's keep it up. Okay guys, here's after the second edge has been debarked. That's all of it. So this is all of the bark that came off both sides. Just to give you a visual of how much I chipped off. Here's the second edge. This one got a little tricky right in this area because it comes out, it wasn't as straight as the other side. So I had to be very careful that I wasn't like gouging in the wood with the chisel. So just be careful if you're gonna be end up, you know, debarking a live edge piece of wood like myself. All right, let's go on to the next step. Okay guys, both edges of the piece of wood have been debarked completely. I have a mess to clean up. Um, I'm going to talk about if you have a knot in your wood, I believe this is the stage where you fill it with epoxy before you go on to sanding the piece of wood. And from what, from what I read online in research, so correct me if I'm wrong, if there's any really experienced woodworkers that end up watching this video, probably not, but if you do, um, chime in please in the comment section. From what I learned, don't use the fast curing epoxy like this this Gorilla five minute epoxy combination. Don't use this stuff, okay? You wanna use the real professional heavy grade epoxy if you have a knot in your wood or holes in your wood that you wanna fill, okay? I just wanted to mention that. So on my piece here on this slab of maple, I have no holes, so I don't have to worry about that, but I just wanted to mention that. So I'm gonna clean this up and then I'm gonna get ready to sand and I'm gonna tell you what grit I'm Okay, online, someone suggested to me that to, the, to start sanding on the edges, I should use a belt sander. I don't have a belt sander, okay? So, and they said use 50 grit, and I don't have 50 grit. The lowest grit I have in any of my sandpapers for any of my sanders is 80. So we're gonna have to make do with what I have. Um, and I'm gonna use my Festool, the ETS 125. It's the smaller of my orbital sanders. It's, um, Looks like this, and I have 80 grit. So I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna go slow and easy across the edges, um, and I'm gonna try that. So I'll put it on a time lapse, and we're gonna give it a go. Okay, guys, I used my fest tool on the edging, and I was noticing just with 80 grit, it just wasn't getting it clean like really clean and i think whoever um advised me to use a belt sander and get like 50 grit you really really need to like get the gunk off the wood so luckily i found like one of my first sanders <laughs> tucked away in a bin this little ryobi um and i found 60 grit sheets full sheet sandpapers and i cut them to size and I am taking it to the edge and it's getting it so clean and bright. So I'm so glad I hung on to this little guy here. So he's doing wonders with getting the edging nice and clean. And once I get that all finished, I will give you guys a close up, okay? Okay, you guys, I'm stopping here tonight. It's pretty late, but here's how clean I got the edges. Not bad. I have a couple spots that I need to get right in here. I think I can get those better. And I took it to the top. And again, I gotta go over it some more with the sander, but as you can see, it's starting to brighten up and it's looking really pretty. All right, turning off the work for this evening. Good night. Okay guys, it is the next day and I wanted to give you an update on the live edge piece of wood. I was able to sand the edges nicely. I do have some more detail sanding to do, but I just wanted to give you a quick update. It cleaned up really nice. If you notice, the wood is much brighter. And you can kind of see what my project is that I'm doing. So my vision for this piece is I'm putting this slab of wood on top of an old sewing machine base. This one is not made by Singer. This is made by another sewing machine company. It's called New Home. Huh, how cool is that? So I told you this piece is going to be raffled off this weekend um, at um, an event at a winery. Isn't this cool? So yes, I'm making a wine rack out of this piece. Look at this. I'm going to be putting wine glass holders. They're gonna be affixed underneath here. So this is gonna go with the whole theme and hopefully they can 
get somebody to raise a lot of money for this piece and they'll be able to donate it to that animal rescue that I was talking about. Um, so what I'm learning thus far with sanding a live edge piece, um, I really do need to get a belt sander. I don't have one. So I'm making do with what I have. Um, I did find this old Ryobi. It, it's doing okay, but it's taking a lot of work. I have 60 grit on here. It is smoothing out the roughness of this piece of wood, but woodworkers, any of you experienced who have done this, please help me in the comment section. What do you usually use? Do you put this through a wood planer? I don't think you do. I'm thinking most people use belt sanders, right? So I'm gonna have to get a belt sander. Also, I had to step out today. I had to get um, an N95 mask. I got too much sand dust going on down here. I don't want to be breathing it in. Normally, I have my orbital sander hooked up to my Festool dust extractor, and that works fabulous, but there's no dust extractor here. So I'm going to have to wear a mask as I finish sanding this piece of wood. I am going to be using this sander on the top. It's making it nice and smooth, and then I'll probably do my fine detail sanding with my orbital sander. So. Just wanted to give you an update. I wanted you to see what it looks like, what I'm envisioning for this project. And then when we come back, I'll probably be at the stage where I'm about ready to apply the top coat. But here we go. Okay guys, here is the finished results of my first live edge slab of wood. Again, this is maple wood. I ended up attaching it to a Singer sewing machine base. Actually, it's not a Singer one. It's called New Home. That was another um, furniture company that made sewing machines. So this is a New Home one. And how ironic that this piece is going to be raffled off at a vineyard today and the proceeds are going to go to a rescue organization for dogs. So isn't it cute? Little play on words, new home, new home for a rescue dog. How cute. So I'm really happy with how, how it turned out. Now I ended up using just shellac for the top coat for a few reasons. So if you've watched any of my videos before, I am a big proponent with teaching people how to do top coats correctly. And the one thing that I noticed with people, they don't look at the back of the can, whatever top coat you're using, oil-based, water-based, and they don't check out the humidity and the ideal weather conditions to apply a top coat. So with this particular piece, I was on a time crunch to get it completed for today. So Polly was out of the question. Polly, you gotta let um, dry 24 hours in between coats and you have to do multiple, multiple coats. So shellac for me was a time saver. And then also I had to do this upstairs because my humidity in my basement, I do have a um, thermometer down here that lets me know the weather conditions in my house. So downstairs in my basement where I work, it is not temperature controlled. So I'm at the mercy of the weather. So the last few days, actually more than the last few days here in New Hampshire, it's been extremely hot, very humid. It's been 80% humidity in my basement for I don't know how long. Now with the air conditioner running upstairs, my humidity was around 50%. So that's perfect conditions for shellac. So that's why I opted for shellac if you're wondering. It gave a nice sheen. I'll do some close-up videos. Um, of this piece. I also, you'll see, I attached wine glass holders underneath, and then there's four spots where the screws go in to attach the slab of wood to the sewing machine base. And I'm just, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, some of the things that I've learned, I probably need to get a belt sander. That was the one thing I need. Um, and I probably would be sanding this live edge outside. 
it made a mess because with the sanders that i do have um, they didn't attach to my dust extractor, so I had sand dust going everywhere. So I probably need to get a belt sander the next time I do a live edge, and then I would sand outdoors. And then next time I would probably apply maybe like an oil-based poly to the top. So these are some of the things that I learned with my first live edge piece of furniture. I hope you enjoyed this video. I cut off that last part saying goodbye, and I had to bring Biscuit down. Can you, you usually help me do the sign off, right, buddy? And my appropriate t-shirt, it says, I work hard so my chihuahua can have a better life. And boy, is that true. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I have so many questions for other woodworkers out there. If you do this, if you make live edge pieces of furniture, help me share your wealth of knowledge. Let me know what I could have done better. Um, I'm also curious, what do other people use most of the time for a top coat? I'm curious about that one too. So again, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. You guys can find me all over social media. I have a Facebook business page for my business and that's right here. That's at Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. Go check that out, follow me there. You can also find me on Instagram and that's over here at Bethany.Yousef. And there I post tons of stuff, before and afters, of my restoration projects, little funny videos of Biscuit, right Boo Boos? <laughs> and he loves climbing up on my neck. So you guys, until next time, we will see you later. Say toodaloo, Biscuit.